being able to have our pets with us on the road is such a blessing. They're part of our family and we wanted to make sure that we got a rig that would accommodate them and uh, that they would be happy in. So we've had a great time with Griffin and Ella in our rig. So today I thought we would just talk about what our normal day looks like in an RV with pets and uh, how we take care of them on the road. We've seen so many pets around the campgrounds, cats and dogs mostly, but also some odd pets. We've seen two pigs and a full-size parrot at different campgrounds. I wish I had footage of them. Next time I'm definitely going to get some. Of course, one of the great things about having a dog with us on the road is all of the walks that we do. And Griffin certainly helps us get outside daily, more than we probably would otherwise. He's a great hiking companion and uh, he always is game for whatever we're doing. He loves to ride in the truck. He loves any time that we're going places and seeing new things and seeing new people. So you can see that Griffin is a pretty shaggy dog. And since COVID started, I have groomed him myself twice, but I'm a little rough and uh, I figured it was about time to get him to a professional groomer. So doing this on the road um, can be a challenge, but I just called up a local groomer who had good reviews on Google and I came in to meet her before our appointment uh, just so I could check it out and he could see it. And it's important if you're doing this on the road, I think, to plan a few weeks ahead because groomers typically book a few weeks out. Luckily, we are here in Maine for three weeks at this campground, so I was able to make an appointment right when we got here and today is right before we're leaving. Griffin's been to the groomer lots of times, so hopefully he'll have a good experience today. We'll see. Griffin eats a raw food diet. We've always had him on that since he was a baby and he's done really well on it. It is a little bit time intensive to prepare it all, but I've been doing it for so many years now, it's kind of natural to me. And we decided that we wanted to continue doing it when we got into the RV. So the only challenge I have is that being at different grocery stores that I'm used to, sometimes they don't have exactly what I would like. So I've had to make some substitutions and move things around, but I'm still uh, cutting up the meat and the organs and putting my bags together and storing them in the freezer. I don't have quite the freezer space that I used to. At home, we had an upright freezer and I could store about two months worth of Griffin's food. Now I do it about two weeks at a time. He gets a mix of chicken and pork and different organ meats that I can find at the grocery store. One thing that's very important to keep in mind if you're going to feed a dog bones is that they are truly raw and not cooked. Cooked bones can splinter and that's what makes them a choking hazard for dogs. But raw bones are springy and chewy which makes them safe to eat and it's a great addition to his diet. Even though Griffin eats a raw diet which is really good for his teeth, poodle mixes have notoriously bad teeth. So. I was a little bit concerned at first that his teeth were getting so brown and then I um, learned about the poodle dental problems. So we've started brushing his teeth. I know I'm supposed to do it every day. I don't quite make it that often, but when, uh, when I think of it, I do it. And he's really good about it. I just concentrate on the front fangs and the back molar. You don't need to brush all the teeth, just the outsides. And it doesn't take very long. 
Good boy. For about the past three weeks, Griffin has had some sort of upset stomach, um, something intermittent going on. There's been diarrhea, vomit, um, and then it seems to clear up a little bit. I, maybe I'll fast him for a day and it clears up and he's fine for a few days. And then it seems to happen again. So I've been going back and forth, um, you know, because we're traveling, I don't want to get involved with some local vet that I have to follow up with or anything. So I've been on the fence about, should I take him in somewhere? Um, but yesterday it seemed to escalate a bit. Uh, and so I'm concerned because now we're in a couple of days scheduled to move to another campground again. And I thought I shouldn't leave this going on for so long. So I finally buckled down and called a local veterinary hospital. I prefer hospitals to regular vet offices because I think the hospital is more willing to get you in quickly. Um, and they're used to dealing with kind of emergency urgent care issues. So this place was great and was able to fit me in this afternoon. But here's what I think is going on. There is a lot of trash at the campgrounds. <laughs> we are not used to living at campgrounds where there's so much stuff around that he can get into. So even when we are just going for walks, you know, if you walk past a dumpster, there might be food scraps on the ground. There's just trash that, um, you know, smells good to him, that he's constantly picking up little things, probably some dead animals in there. I don't know what he's eating, but I think that's the cause of the distress. So I just want the vet to tell me he looks fine, keep him away from the dumpsters uh, or if there's something more serious going on. All right, Griff, let's go inside. Yeah. You can see he's really in a lot of pain. <laughs> All right. Well, that went well. Um, the doctor just did a simple exam, uh, gave us some antibiotics, some probiotic powder for his food. Um, I need to come back with a stool sample hopefully in the next couple of days and I guess we're good to go. One thing that was nice about having a sticks and bricks house was that we had a large yard that we could just let Griffin out in. He had uh, an electronic collar on that kept him within the boundaries of our yard and it was a great place for him to roam around and we didn't really need to watch him a lot. Now, of course, at the campgrounds, uh, there are leash rules. All pets should be on a leash at all times. And we try to adhere to that mostly, unless we're in the woods on a trail or something. If we're in the campground, we keep him on a leash. We do have a long tie out that we usually hitch to a picnic table and hang it. We have a little hook outside of our RV door that it can hang on. And he's uh, done great on that. Sometimes he likes to sit outside and watch the traffic and the other dogs go by. He's always done really well on a leash and we don't have any problem with that. I do see some other dogs around the campgrounds that are not well trained on a leash and they're very barky. Um, a lot of loud dogs at campgrounds. <laughs> Ella also does really well on a leash. We've used this for her for a long time, but we did get this new harness once we moved into the RV. We felt it was a bit more secure so that she couldn't wriggle out of it. Uh, she does enjoy sitting outside and being able to see nature. Our biggest adjustment to having a cat in the RV was where to put the litter box. There's all kinds of things online of people who have made special places for the litter box in their RV. Cut holes under the stairs into the basement storage area, made end tables or coffee tables with litter boxes inside of them underneath the bed. Um, so. Our plan was to go with the basement storage route. We were hopeful that we could cut a hole under the stairs that Ella could crawl underneath and get down there to use the litter box and it would be out of sight and not smelly. Because of the way our RV steps are constructed, we thought that would be too big of a construction project and we weren't absolutely sure that Ella was going to stay in the RV. We wanted to see how she was going to do the first few months. So we put a portable litter box in the corner of the dining room next to the table. Uh, I would say it was not smelly and you know I cleaned it out every day. Uh, it wasn't ideal and also having her food up on the table out of Griffin's reach <laughs> wasn't ideal. But like I said, we were just 
trying to have an adjustment period to even see if she was going to stay in the RV before we made a lot of mod modifications. Unfortunately, Ella has not been as happy RVing as we would have hoped, so she is going to go live at a new home. Ella actually really adjusted well to life in the RV. There was plenty of places for her to jump up and down and be at different heights on the counters and the chairs, plenty of windows for her to look out of, and soft beds and couches for her to take naps on. But what she really did not like and do well at was traveling in the truck, which of course is a large part of being on the road. We did make sure that Ella was traveling in a crate. We didn't feel comfortable with her roaming around the truck um, because she has never traveled well in the car and it stresses her out. So we got a special crate for her. Uh, we tried a few different things to make her more comfortable in there. We got a cover for the crate. I thought maybe if it was darker in there or she couldn't see outside, that might be more calming. We got some pheromone spray for cats that we would spray in the crate and that's also supposed to have a calming effect. Those things did have a marginal difference and she did a little bit better with those, but it was certainly was not, um, her stress was not absent with them. And uh, she was still a distraction to us, even with those measures and stressed out herself. Today is Ella's last day in the RV. She's been with us from the beginning and she is 13 years old uh, we got her when she was a new baby kitten and she is going to be living with our son Jaron in his new apartment. Ella has loved being in the RV with us and she likes this counter in particular because she can see right out the door. But one thing she really does not do well with is traveling in the truck. You may have heard her crying in the background of some of our other videos while we were driving. And not only is it uncomfortable for her, but it's very distracting for us to try to drive and maneuver the RV while she's so upset. The original plan was for her to live with our son Jaron last year when he first moved out to his own place, but the house that he was living in did not accept cats. And since we were not ready to get on the road yet, we said we would keep her for an additional year. So now he is set up in his own apartment. They accept cats and it's gonna be good for him to have a companion in Ella and for her to have someone there all the time in uh, her house and not have to travel in the truck anymore. So we will miss her but I'm glad that she and Jaren are going to be together. That's been our experience with having pets in our RV. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.